And she was heading on down to Texas to just rescue some of the animals that were trapped down in the floodwaters of Texas and that area. Amy Hines is here from A. Hines 57 Pet Rescue and Transport. Um, what you did last week on behalf of all animal lovers uh, is above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you for oh, what you did. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, we were lucky enough to have a chance to Skype on your way down. Yeah, that was fun. And, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then on the way back, when you brought back more animals than you ever intended, more than twice what you thought you were gonna get down in Texas. Yeah. Now, how did this all start, Amy? Uh, when it came to you going down to Texas? Well, I was just watching the news and seeing the dogs, you know, in shelters stuck on top of their dog houses and the shelters flooding. And, and you know, I know, I, I can only imagine what those shelter people were thinking and feeling about, you know, how, how are we gonna save these dogs and keep them alive. Now, the dogs that you have here now, originally you brought back more than 100 animals, what, 96 dogs and five cats. Right. Um, but since that time, we found out that those 96 dogs were actually more than 96 dogs. Yes. Okay. We <laughs> How many dogs did you end up bringing back then? Because Well, technically. Technically. <laughs> technically, we brought back 105. Wow. Yeah. Because dogs. Because um, one of our dogs gave birth yesterday to nine puppies. Nine puppies? Yeah. Well, I thought maybe there was more than one birth. It was nine total? It was nine puppies. Oh, my yeah. goodness. We had a so, busy Labor Day. Now, one thing we do want to make sure that we point out, this is something that, that's really important, that these are not dogs that were rescued from floodwaters, correct? Correct. Correct. These are the dogs that were in shelters already. Um, like, I think Honor was in a shelter since June. And, you know, they've, they've been there. And what we wanted to do was make room for the dogs that are being displaced okay. by the hurricane so they can stay there and be reunited with their owners. What a great idea that is. So. All right, first of all, why don't you tell us uh, who the handlers that you brought along <laughs> with you, who, who the humans are that you brought with you. So who did you bring? This is Jen Hines, and um, she is handling Dusty. Dusty. <laughs> okay. And Bethany Helmers, and she's handling Lester. Lester. Lester's very laid back. He likes the meatloaf treats, we see. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, he's totally... <laughs> I'm handling Jersey. <laughs> no, he's handling you yeah. is what's happening there. So Jersey is a lover, as he you can see here. He is a lover. <laughs> and, and who's this one right over here? <laughs> and this is Beth, Bobby Amba. <laughs> <laughs> and she's handling honor. Honor. This is honor, like you mentioned earlier. But and Bobby uh, went with us, and she, um, she has several of the the dogs she's fostering. so again not only did you bring them back they're housing them at the same time yeah now do you still need some assistance in people fostering some of these dogs yep we still have some left over in our building um so they still need foster homes now explain what happens uh when someone uh, wants to help you guys out and foster a dog that that you guys have at your facility right now Dusty. what happens there with those dogs you uh, just want to play <laughs> well we number one we we do a home visit just like we would for an adopter and and try and find the right fit for that home we don't want to stick a dog in there that's not going to going to get along with the resident dogs mm -hmm. and we provide everything we provide the um the crate bedding dishes food treats if they want to dress their dog we have clothes um, <laughs> so you do the whole nine yards then. we do everything yep and we pay for all vet care and monthly preventatives and Anything the dog needs, we provide. And, and just in return for caring for the dog yep. until someone is looking for another one. How often do people foster dogs end up just saying, I'm going to keep the dog? Oh, most of us have failed. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning we didn't let it get adopted. We kept it. Right. Um, that happens all the time. But we uh, make sure nobody becomes a hoarder. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that's yeah. really important, too. That's very important. It's so important. easy to, to get a bunch of these dogs and then just keep them, isn't it? Right. Because it's, you know, we fall in love with them and mm -hmm. it's hard to let them go mm -hmm. but we have to learn to love and let go yeah. um, mainly because cities have city limits mm -hmm. and we can only have so many now speaking so. of your facility where are you housing these animals now because we know that you're opening a, a new building that's in a construction phase yeah I wish it was open by now yeah. um, but we're still in our building in DeSoto um, right off 169 mm -hmm. so it's just 11 miles west of Jordan Creek Parkway, so we're not very far out of town. And have any of the dogs been adopted yet that you brought back from Texas, or are they just, not starting, yet. just we're, starting the process? Yeah, now? we're getting them all vetted, and mm. um, we've got several, like Honor, who is heartworm positive. It's pretty common for 
dogs from the south to be heartworm positive. Mm -hmm. So we've and got so a lot of. But you are treating Honor though, right? Yep, yep. So we have we have a lot of big expenses coming up. So donations are welcome mm -hmm. um, because heartworm treatment is spendy. Yes, it and is. And we've um, of the we know we have seven positive heartworm tests. Okay, and that, heartworm dogs. And that we're talking hundreds of dollars for each for each dog. Yeah, about eight hundred bucks a piece. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, and we still have to test. I think about. 35 of them. Wow. Okay, yeah. now one of the things that you mentioned about uh, getting some veterinary care before they came back, you mentioned that uh, you had somebody look at the dogs before yeah. they were uh, safe to travel. Explain was, how that worked. Well, um, we're USDA licensed, so we have to follow the guidelines for USDA, which says no dog can cross state lines without a rabies certificate and a health certificate, and they have to be examined by a vet. So um, the, the vets and the vet students at Highway 30 Vet Clinic in College Station, okay. they opened up for us and stayed open until about 11 o'clock that night. You know, College and Station, that's where Texas A&M <laughs> University is, right? Right, okay. right. And they and had a veterinary bunch clinic, a yeah, veterinary hospital, or they had uh, a school is there. Right. They had a bunch of students there helping out, and every single dog came off our vans, and every dog was thoroughly examined, weighed, temperature taken, um, rabies shot given everything they were all dewormed defleed mm. which made the ride home fun no I'm sure it was <laughs> and, and that ride home how long did it take for you guys to get down there initially um, well it took longer to get down than it did to get back I think because we took made a lot of stops and but, but again, you're just getting acclimated to what, right. what the whole process was going to be like exactly. when you had animals coming back. And then, so how long it did was, it take to go down there? Um, what did it take us, like 18, 18 hours? 18 hours. Okay. Hey, and then, honor. And then, and then you you got the dogs, you, you retrieved all the dogs, got them all loaded up, and you didn't waste any time. You just turned around yeah. and you came right back. Well, it was really important because we had all these dogs on the van and cats, and we didn't want the cats too stressed for things. Mm -hmm. um, but the dogs, you know, that's a long trip. But um, so we had to make sure we, we just got going and got mm -hmm. them back so they didn't have to stay on the vans any longer than they needed to. And then what time did you finally get home then? Um, we got home in various phases between noon and and about quarter to two okay. in Wonderful. the afternoon. Now, one thing we want to uh, point out, these two dogs here, these two right here, they're buddies, aren't they? Yeah, they were in a shelter together, so we ke we're keeping them together and um, just to keep some kind of normalcy for them. Right, because again, they're, they're, they're good they're friends. They're a thousand miles from home. Yeah. You know, you know more than that. They've, so. they've, their lives have been turned upside down again. I'm sure they were the first time they went into the shelter. Right. And but again, so people want to learn more about these animals. Where, where can they go and learn more <laughs> about these animals? <laughs> um, they can go to Heinz57.com mm -hmm. um, or our Facebook page. We've been post hi sweetheart. We've been posting them on our page. So okay. wonderful. And yeah. what, what are the hours of operation in case somebody wants to get any of these dogs? Um, Saturdays from eleven to four we're open, but they're obviously not all in our building. Mm -hmm. um, so if they want to meet a particular dog, they can just um, send us an email or fill out an application and we'll um, set something up during the week. Okay, let's uh, review the, the dogs here and the names of the dogs. This is Jersey right here. Is that right? Yep, that's okay, Jersey. This is Jersey. And then uh, next to Jersey over here uh, to my that right. That is Honor. Honor, okay. And then Jersey, <laughs> Jersey's buddy is who? Dusty. Dusty, and look, it looks like a Dusty, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And then is that Lester over on the far side? That's Lester. Lester's very laid back. Yeah, Lester's yeah. being calm. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> These folks, two are pretty young. They're under a year old. They're right, probably so around folks, eight months uh, old. We need your help. Um, that's basically the bottom line. That's the reason that Amy is here. We need your help. We need to get some homes for these dogs, some forever homes. They came a long way, and they are just looking for love, and they have a lot of love to give back. That they do. Wonderful, and so do you. And so does everybody here. Thank you all for everything you've done for over 100 dogs that came back from Texas. Thank you so much, Amy Hines. Thank you. A Hines 57 Pet uh, Rescue and Transport. Check them out, folks. What a great organization. We will be right back. This is CW Iowa Live in Westwood.